Good morning, everyone. God bless you, and we really appreciate a welcome. Appreciate uh, the fact that we are here to be a blessing uh, to the city of Ibadan, and also to the state or your state, and to Southwest and the whole of Nigeria. And uh, from this uh, crusade, which is uh, titled "Total Freedom uh, Through Faith in Christ," I believe. I was looking forward with great expectation and solving problems and granting people healing, deliverance, miracle of, of every kind. We've been to other parts of the country and we transmitted from each location, which we refer to as Alpha location, the place where the crusade is holding, and then we transmit to the whole world. And the great has been the response and also the blessings of the Lord upon the people who have connected. And we believe that this being the first crusade in this uh, 2022, we believe that it's going to be like a pace setter crusade and great things are going to happen. God loves uh, all the people in your state, in Ibadi in particular now, and the Lord is going to manifest his love in great ways, more than our expectation in Jesus' name. Once again, I appreciate uh, our joining hands together to bless the people of God in our city. Augustus. Yeah, we've been having many forecasts from different people, men of God, about what we should be expecting in the year 2022. And 2022 has come with all these uh, uh, sentiments and things that are happening within the country that people talk about. Your prediction about what we should look for, sir, and what God is telling Nigerians in the year 2022 as forward to this wonderful crusade. I think we uh, need to understand predictions and prophecies coming from men of God. Um, generally, there are different kinds of prophecies. There are prophecies that are said, like God has said, this will happen. Like, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. That prophecy was said, and at a particular time, at God's own appointed time, it will be fulfilled. There are other uh, prophecies that are conditional. Like, for example, Isaiah, the same prophet that uh, said, a virgin shall, shall conceive. That same Isaiah went to Ezekiel and said, The Lord has said that you set your house in order because you will die. Ezekiel did not take that like a prophecy that was set in the eternal that cannot be altered. So he turned his face to the wall and he prayed and he changed that prophecy. That's conditional prophecy. So when men of God or women of God prophesy this will happen 2022 in our country, in our nation, in our continent, Africa, or in the world, it's conditional. With prayer and faith in the promises of God, the promises of God or the prayer and the unyielding, unbending faith of God's people can affect, influence conditional prophecies. Uh, sir, I want to believe and, and everyone here will believe we agree with me that your voice is that voice of authority and as much as we talk christians have a critical role to play in the country but since many christians are not taking the, the the front role where they should be what would be your advice and your message uh, to christians most especially this period that nigeria really needs uh the men of God to really also assist us. We need to understand that our destiny is in our hands. Uh, for example, we know about Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord said, Abraham, I'm desiring, planning, thinking of doing something. And I can't do it except I let you know about it. Uh, they, and you will see then that Abraham, like you have said, was a man of authority 
not only in his family or in his community, but God gave him authority to even affect or influence the condition of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, so he said, God, hold on. I hear what you've told me. What if you found this number of righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, what will you do? Will you not spare them? And he said, I will spare them. I about 40, I about 30, I about 20, I about 10. He stopped at 10. The Lord did not stop him, but he stopped at 10. And but he couldn't find 10 people there. But again, you see the authority that he carried. Uh, Jonah came to Nineveh and said, as for Nineveh, this is what will happen because they were evil and wicked exceedingly. He didn't choose his authority as a prophet to stop that, but then the authority passed to the hand of the king. And the king then commanded the whole of Nineveh and said, let's repent, let's get this done. And again, because of that intervention of the king, they were not destroyed. What I'm saying is, when we hear of, uh, you know, what's happening, those are facts. Like what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, facts. What happened in Nineveh, those are facts. But then there are men that will take, let's say, the horn of the altar and say, God, let's, since you've given us opportunity, he said, as for my creation, command me, demand of me what you want me to do. And he will do it. I think it depends on how we recognize our authority and our place in the nation and in any nation. Baba, Mama, it's good to see you. It's good to have you in Ibadan. Thank you for coming to Ibadan. We know we are blessed having you around. Thank you very much. Um, as much as we are struggling not to ask political questions, sir, in compliance with the directive, sir, <laughs> it's still like it's coming. Forgive us, sir. But, sir, um, a lot of times when we're preparing for changing of leadership, as Christians, we pray, virtually other religions. And we know God answers our prayers. And now we're preparing for another one. What should be the focus of our prayer in electing leadership ahead of our forthcoming election? I think we'll pray that God will give us the best and give us leaders that will turn around the nation for the better. But then, like a farmer has good land, he has good seed. And he spends all this time praying that God will give him a bountiful harvest. But he doesn't cultivate, he doesn't plant, he doesn't reap, he doesn't do anything. The nation will go hungry and you will remain poor. We'll pray, we'll also act. God has told us faith without action, without corresponding action is dead. So we'll pray for good leadership, for the best of leadership. Then we use our minds, we get our funds, and we vote for the people that God leads us to vote for that will turn the situation of the country around. We we'll pray, we we'll also act. A lot of Christians are losing hope and giving up on God. So many we even say God should come down to Nigeria. Okay. What for those Christians and also Christians. I think sometimes we magnify our problems and we minimize our hope. For anybody to say, even if God were to come to Nigeria, that person doesn't think that there will be any change. I think that is going too far. It's making ourselves hopeless and making a mountain out of a more hill, uh, we should still have hope in God. And we should know that Nigerians are not uh, in total despair. The same Nigerians are doing well in America, in Europe, in different places, even with the government. So it's not like we do not have people that have the foresight, the intelligence, the education, the experience and everything that can turn things around. Ours would be to 
hopefully and positively look for such people and they can join hands together or we can join hands together and build a nation. And I believe that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. You know why they are here. Lord, I pray in your mercy, compassion and love, I pray you bless them beyond the expectation from this moment, even this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn negative things in their lives to be positive. Amen. In their profession, in their lives, in everything, Lord, I pray that you also touch them and turn things around that they will know this is the hand of the Lord upon their lives. Amen. Bless them. Bless their families. Amen. Bless the work of their hands. Amen. Let their good desires be uh, answered and performed by you in Jesus' name. Amen. Convince them by what you do that you are the God who answers prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your chapter of total freedom through faith in Christ Jesus.